Hey everyone, welcome back to Gannet Reviews and welcome to something unique for this channel. This is the first time I've been able to share a sailing catamaran despite having over 100 videos on the channel so far. What we're looking at today is Mark Ziegler Yacht Sales latest listing. This is a 2005 Manta 42 Mark II sailing yacht. And at the time of shooting this video, she was for sale in Jacksonville, Florida for $309,500. This one's been designed, built and maintained to be a serious blue water cruiser. The boat's name is Adventures of a Lifetime and that's exactly what this one can offer. Being that she is a catamaran, she's got a length overall of 42 feet but she's got a beam of 21 feet and she's got a maximum draft of just under 4 feet. That beam gives you great stability as well as offering a ton of space on board for full liveaboard accommodation. And you'll notice as I walk down this pontoon, she's got a pretty high freeboard. The helm and cockpit is pretty high up as well. So that means it's going to be a very dry boat for everybody on board. This one's all about relaxation, cruising and chasing that horizon. And I'll show you in more detail when we get on board. But I love the fact that this one's also been equipped. But you could sail this single-handed if you wanted. You certainly don't need a full complement of crew that you'd normally associate with an ocean-going yacht. I like that this one's got guardrails around the entire yacht. But you can see it's also got some sort of mesh netting, for want of a better word. And that helps stop anything or anyone going overboard, especially when you're offshore. Stepping aboard is easily done from the steps that are built into the stern on both hulls. And this hardtop gives great shade and protection for everybody down below. But it's also got 1600 watt solar panels built into the roof. These are hooked up to lithium batteries. And this had an expense of around $15,000 and was complete in 2021. But it means that you can keep everything topped up and charged no matter where you go. I like that if you are walking on the deck, there's plenty of room to do so. There's also plenty of handholds in place. And you'll see that most of the lines are all rolling back and these can be controlled and operated at the helm. I love the seating that's been built into both the port and starboard bow. You also have that mesh netting on the bow as well that you can lay in and relax while you're underway. And on a day like today, I can't imagine a better way on enjoying a day on the water. The jib and also the jib sail cover was replaced in 2019. And at that time they also replaced the halyard for both the jib and the mainsail. This has been maintained regardless of cost. And it actually just arrived from Mexico into Jacksonville, Florida when it was put on the market. Fill the tanks, fill the galley, and this one's ready to go again. I like to have got a number of storage lockers built into the bow section. This one here is actually coupled up to the anchor locker. This is a Maxwell windlass, and it does have foot controls. And this is a new Mantis anchor. It was replaced last year. But there's also a Spade anchor and a Danforth anchor stored on board as well. I like the louver effect that's over the windows. There's no large windows on this. So is that as an ocean going yacht, if it does take a large wave over the bow, then that way you get extra protection to make sure it doesn't have any damage and potential flooding. And as we make our way back to the cockpit, when last did you see a 42 foot yacht that you could probably get about 10 adults in the cockpit and comfort? To start with, we've got an L-shaped seating area around a cockpit table. And then this seating expands across the entire stern. And you can start to see the advantage of that 21 foot beam. And then we've got more seating in the port quarter, just behind the helm station itself. But raised up above the storage boxes, the entire back stretch of the hardtop, that's all been converted so that there's seating across here as well. And in a cam day like today, you could lay across that almost like a hammock. And then on the port side, we've got an outdoor grill built into this section. And then I love not only the use of these storage boxes, but also how well everything's been labelled. You'll see that throughout the yacht, that somebody's taking time and effort to make sure that everything's labelled and everything's got a right home. So you always know where to find it, which is really advantageous, especially in an emergency. Overhead, there's also grips built in. This could be used as a rod holder, but it could also be used to hold on to things like a boat hook. Now the entire cockpit does come with an glass enclosure, but the front three sections were replaced just a couple of months ago. 
And I mentioned earlier that this one could be sailed single-handed if you wanted. And if you notice, all the ropes and lines required for sailing this yacht, they all lead back to the helm station. We've also got the winches here, as well as a rope clutch, so that everything can be easily maintained without having gone up to the bow. And then in terms of electronics, out here we've got your speed, your log and your depth. you got the autopilot, you get the wind speed and direction, you got the compass, and you got a Raymarine multifunction display. It's got chart plotter, but it was also connected to the full engine instrumentation. And this was installed in 2019. I also wanted to point out up on the bow, on both the port and starboard side, another deep locker space. It's more like a lazarette, but this would be great for ropes and fenders for whenever you're not tied up in the marina. And before we head inside, I wanted to head down to the stern. And that way you can see how easy it is to access this yacht. And you can see we've got the new Corinthian deck carpet in the cockpit and in the transom. And on our starboard hull we've got a board and ladder built in to the edge of the stern. And between the hulls, you can see over the stern, we also have the rigid inflatable tender. This has got a 20 horse, 4 stroke outboard. And it's been serviced and maintained on a regular basis. You'll also note in several locations on the stern, there's rod holders built in for both fishing and for trawling as well. And then as we go to head inside, you'll just see how well designed and equipped this is for either liveaboard use or for long term extended cruising. To begin with, I was impressed with the door that leads in. I don't know if that's technically a watertight door, but it's certainly very strong and secure. But you've also got the option of using a mesh door if you want some fresh air but don't want to deal with all the bugs that you might have. Stepping inside, we've got the saloon to starboard, and I love how bright and airy it is in here. You can see those large windows on the bow with that louvre effect that I mentioned earlier. I'm thinking this saloon table is big enough for six or seven adults, if you include the two little stools that's underneath here as well that slide out. Overhead we've got some opening hatches. There's also a lot of artificial light throughout the yacht, and some of these have got red light for night sailing. On the port hand side we've got a navigation station and there's also a lot of large flat surface area for whenever you're working on the charts. And as I pan round further you'll see we also have the galley on the port hand side as well. This is one of the best design galleys I've seen on a yacht of this size. You get a wide range of drawers, lockers and cabinets. You've got a deep sink. You get good worktop space for cooking and preparing meals. You get a three burner gas cooker. And this has also got an oven and grill built into it. There's deep storage space and that starboard corner. And as I pan round further, we've also got a new microwave oven that was recently installed as well. And throughout the entire yacht for all the cabins, I love how safe and secure the drawers, lockers and cabinets are. doesn't feel like anything's going to pop open while you're underway. Again, testament to that blue water design that this yacht has. And then underneath the navigation station, you'll find we've got a U-line ice maker. But what really blew my mind was how much fridge and freezer storage there is on this yacht. This yacht's got an Adler Barber. This is a top loading 10 cubic foot refrigerator freezer. It's a 60 40 split and it's got 6 inch foam for insulation. You can easily spend days, if not weeks, without returning to shore with this one. Now, when that fridge freezer is closed, there's a ton of worktop space above, which I think is perfect for working on the charts. The worktop space itself at the navigation station, this actually lifts up and there's plenty of storage space underneath for keeping all the charts and also different stationary dividers, parallel rules, things of that nature. And I wanted to show you a book that's been left on board, which really took me by surprise. But somebody's prepared an owner's manual for this exact yacht. When you look at it, it's split up into everything that's to do with the maintenance. 
and also just a basic operations manual for all the main components throughout the entire yacht. It's a great quick reference guide in an emergency, but also as the yacht is for sale, if you were to purchase this yacht, feels like you'd be brought up to speed very quick with this information close at hand. And then we've got the VHF radio, the wind instrumentation and also the autopilot. And then if we lead down into what would be the port side hull, notice the red courtesy lights at the steps, again for night vision. And at the bottom of these steps we've got a number of storage options, but notice also the opening porthole for extra ventilation and natural light. And then if we head aft, I'll take you into the first cabin. And I was impressed with the headroom in here. I'm six foot two and I didn't have any issues walking through here. But it's rare to say that when you're on the sailing yacht. And you'll see we've got a number of portholes and hatches. And these also have that mesh screen so that you don't need to worry about the bugs if you do want to open it for ventilation. There's plenty of storage lockers, drawers and cabinets for your personal belongings. you got controls to the air conditioning. You've got hanging locker space, and these hanging locker doors have got a louver effect, and that way there's fresh air and ventilation flowing through it, and you don't have that damp, mouldy smell that you sometimes get on yachts. And you'll see there's additional storage below this as well. And again, these all close and lock firmly in place, so you don't need to worry about it opening when the boat's underway. Now underneath the bunk is actually where you'll find the engine. Being a catamaran, this is actually twin screw. So you can operate this in a marina the way you would with a typical twin screw motor yacht. This one can rotate in its own length. She's got twin Volvo Penta, 30 horsepower diesel engines. These are coupled to sail drive units. And it's got somewhere in the region of 1600 hours on the clock. And you can access the engines easier by lifting the mattress. And you've got full access for the larger maintenance or upgrades that may be required. And if we pan round and head forward, again you'll see we've got more storage. It's primarily all shelving in this area. There's a blue one or cruiser. Storage is always a huge commodity factor for considering. You could easily use this as an extended liveaboard. And then on the bow on the port hull, you'll find the heads compartment. I should point out at this part, there's a 100 gallon freshwater tank capacity, as well as a 120 gallon fuel tank capacity. But earlier this year, there was a Seawater Pro water maker installed, and it produces 40 gallons per hour. There's also a 10 gallon hot water heater, and an engine heat exchange pressurized fresh water system. I can't remember ever seeing a shower compartment on a sailing yacht that had as much space as this one does. You also feel that full advantage of the catamaran design, on that 21 foot beam. She's only 42 foot in length, but when I was walking around the yacht, you don't feel the yacht move with you. And then as we head back up into the main saloon, we'll cross over and I'll show you the starboard section. You'll notice at the saloon, we've got a large TV that's mounted on the bulkhead. It's also a fusion stereo system overhead. And that's got multiple control units, including one at the helm. You got more hanging locker space underneath the TV. And then as we make our way down these steps, at the bottom there's shelves which is more like a bookcase. And this has got all the service manuals and instrumentation documentation. Well, a lot of the components on board have been recently been upgraded over the past year or two. It's great to see that documentation close at hand. And there's actually a heads compartment before you get to the forward guest cabin. So this is you making your way into the starboard bow. And in this cabin, it's actually got full laundry facilities as well. And that tote you see on the bed, I would normally move things like that out of the way when doing these videos. But I wanted to highlight how the owners have got a number of spares close at hand. And it's all clearly labelled what each item is for. As with the other cabins, this one's got the overhead hatch. It's also got artificial light. This is a combination washer dryer, which you'll see that there's storage below that appliance as well. And you can lift this mattress up and have even more access 
but for the purpose of this video you can see here we've got a number of mechanical components such as the water maker this is also where the macerator is but notice how clean clear and well labeled everything is in here and if we turn around and head out this cabin that's usually then heading to the stern of the starboard hull so you've got a total of five berths in three cabins with two head compartment and as with the other hull underneath here is where you'll find the starboard engine for day to day maintenance you get plenty of room through this access hatch but you can lift the mattress and have an overhead access panel as well these engines have been serviced and maintained on a regular basis and the sail drive actually had the seals replaced in May earlier this year and on this bed is actually the eyes and glass canopy covers because that entire cockpit can be sealed in and enclosed if you wanted it to be and this cabin does have a number of storage lockers, drawers and cabinets but it's also got a TV mounted into the bulkhead as well leading forward I personally was really impressed with this yacht I've got over a hundred videos on my channel but this is the first time I've been able to share with you a sailing catamaran I hope this video has been able to give an insight into what life on board could be like there's not many times you get this opportunity to get on sailing catamarans I'd like to thank Mark Ziegler for the opportunity to come on board love to hear your thoughts and comments if you could leave a comment down below if you haven't done so already please hit the like or subscribe button it really does make a difference and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.